far too often we're consumed with, okay, let me write this resume to get a job. Mm -hmm. And people have a misconception mm -hmm. of what resumes are. I literally spell it out for you in the book, what a resume is, what the purpose of a resume is from a recruiting perspective. Because, you know, you, you can't, people, of most individuals are not trained on how to write a resume. Welcome to the Networking with Michelle podcast, the show dedicated on providing you the how-tos of marketing and networking strategies. Here we believe in the Jim Rohn quote, success is nothing more than a few simple disciplines practiced every day. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Networking with Michelle show. I'm your host, Michelle Gamay. Today I have a special guest, good friend, Hey, hello, how are you doing? Juanita Hines, how are you doing today? I'm wonderful, how are you, Michelle? Good, so we finally got you here. Yes, thank you for having me on the Absolutely. show. I'm extremely excited, Absolutely. it's been a long time coming. Yes, so Juanita <laughs> is the owner of Regional Consulting and the author of Master Your Career Playbook, Resumes, your cheat sheet to writing resumes. So we're going to talk about all things career-wise, resume-wise, networking-wise, yes. and all your wisdom. Just just pour it out on us. All right. <laughs> Look forward to porn. <laughs> so what's your background? How did you get started? Um, I got my start in HR. I fell into HR after uh, going to a staffing agency. Mm -hmm. um, I was frustrated as a recent college graduate mm -hmm. and did not have the opportunity to have a favorable experience because as I was submitting resumes, all the companies would come back and say, you don't have enough experience. You don't have enough experience. And so in that frustration, I went to a staffing agency <laughs> and they sent me out for a, a temporary position. Um, for a two-day receptionist position and love the company, oh. love the organization. Um, but the one of the HR execs came down and pretty much demanded my resume. And so long story short, he, you know, we went back and forth until he made me print out my resume. And then when the agency called, I let them know, I said, look, you know what? I was trying not to give him my resume, but he was really forceful and, and kind of making me, you know, being, being very, um, coerced to give my resume. And so they said, don't worry about it, Juanita, you'll never have to go back there again. So they called me three minutes after I walked out the door and asked if I would be interested in potentially recruiting. And I said, absolutely. I don't know what it does, but Wait, yeah. The staffing agency or the company? The staffing agency. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the company um, wanted to initially uh, hire me because I, I just came in for a two-day receptionist position, yeah. but they had gotten such Knocked positive feedback. Yeah. So when I went into, I, I literally like to tell people I fell into HR. I yeah. wasn't looking for it. Um, but when I got into HR, I realized that it wasn't that I didn't have enough experience, is that I did not know how to communicate the experience that I did have. Mm -hmm. Into relevancy. Um, and, you know, falling into HR was one of the best things that's happened to me um, because I've had the experience, I've had the opportunity to recruit in place on a variety of different levels and spectrums. I've recruited up to executive positions. I've recruited domestically and internationally and, wow. and really had the opportunity to, to meet a lot of different people and, and service a lot of different types of companies. So how long were you in corporate before you started your company? Um, three years, actually. Okay, that's not So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it's not very long, but, you know, it's it was very, um, it was a great experience. I had amazing, I had an amazing manager, my last manager, uh, Sharon. She was absolutely amazing. She gave me the tools I needed to succeed. Um, and she really trusted me with mm. autonomy. And so the uh, more I built and, important. you know, we worked together and we kind of collaborated and bounced each other, bounced ideas off of each other. Um, and it's not that I wanted to quote, run out to start my own company, I was literally spiritually led away from my job. Mm. So God you told me to about leave. that journey? It was, uh, it was very interesting. Um, so it's not the traditional reason for leaving your job. And um, I was very happy on my job. I'd just been promoted to a two-person office. My manager and I, we were tasked with opening an office location. Um, and so it was just a two-person office in the Northern Virginia, D.C. area, Alexandria, Virginia. 
Um, she brought me in. We had a great relationship. Um, we actually surpassed our goal, which were supposed to be un un unattainable mm -hmm. because they were like, oh, we'll just give you a million dollar budget because mm -hmm. we don't really know mm -hmm. where you're going to fall yeah. on the spectrum. You're a brand new office. You actually have a smaller territory. Um, we don't really know where to go from here. Yeah. And so we surpassed our yearly goals in eight months. Wow. <laughs> so, which was, you know, which was very interesting. And actually in that process, I asked uh, Sharon on my last evaluation that I had, I said, Sharon, where could you see me going in the company? And she said, you know what, Juanita, I could see you going to law school. It's like, <laughs> law school? What in the world? Law school? There's not a law department here. Yeah, what are, what are yeah. you talking about? But when, um, when I received confirmation and, you know, after fighting and um, finally succumbing to the the desire to to the need to give my notice um i uh when i had sat in her office actually i had, i had, uh, written out my i prayed about it i said lord if this is what you want me to do right. i need you to give me the words to say it the opportunity to right, say it and right, give me the strength right. to do it give me the know? sign and slam yeah. me across my forehead i loved my job <laughs> i loved my job i love my manager she was just amazing and so um, that day, actually, we had gotten to the point where we needed additional staff. We'd already brought someone in from one of the other offices. Well, at five o'clock, she up and leaves, which almost never happened at our office. I was like, oh, OK. So um, then she's yelling at me. Hey, Juanita, what can we budget for AFP, um, Association of Fundraising Professionals? What can we budget for SHRM? What can we budget for ADA, for all these organizations? And so she's yelling at me from across the office. And I'm like, Sharon, I'm not about to yell at you back and forth. So I went in and sat in her office. And so we started talking about numbers and, you know, clients and things like that. Michelle, when I tell you it got pitch quiet once we finished talking, I was like, okay, I guess this is the opportunity. So I said, you know, actually, I'm glad that it's just you and I here mm -hmm. because there's something else that I need to talk to you about. And so for about 15 to 20 minutes, I went into telling her how she's been an amazing manager, how this is the most <laughs> difficult thing I was gonna, I've ever had to yeah. do, how I've learned so much from her and I appreciate the experience, you know, and I'm going on and on and on and on. And then I take my resignation letter and I slide it to her. She said, oh, what is this? What is this? And I'm like, Sharon, it's my resignation letter. It's what I've been talking to you about the past 15 minutes. And she's like, you know what, Juanita, I knew it was coming. Yeah. I said, what do you mean? She said, you remember what that performance review when I told you I could see you going to law school? Mm -hmm. She said, I knew you were leaving at that point, but I didn't know how long I had. Mm. And what was the what? time frame? That was about probably about two months before oh, okay. because she was really insistent upon getting someone else in the office. Uh, and that's when we were, you yeah, know, we, yeah. we borrowed someone from another yeah. office. And so she she knew, I guess, spiritually, which was crazy because mm -hmm. I didn't even have confirmation yet. Mm -hmm. Like confirmation, confirmation. <laughs> like, uh -uh, Lord, you know what? I have a mortgage. You can't just be telling people to leave job. And so when um, she said, you know what, Juanita, I will not accept your resignation letter today. She said, um, I want you to go home and pray about it. Okay. And if you wake up and tomorrow you feel like this is what you want me to do, I will go ahead and um, I, if you feel like it's not what you want me mm -hmm. to do, I'll tear it up and act like it never happened. But if you feel like it's what you're supposed to do, I'll go ahead and pass it on. I said, okay, Michelle. <laughs> the next day I woke up early. I woke up, first of all, I'm allergic to like 6.30, <laughs> okay? I woke up at like 6.15 on my own with no alarm <laughs> clock. I could hear the birds chirping. It was almost like the, the wind was new. My windows were open and I could smell the fresh air coming in. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my goodness, this is so fresh. I got in my car. Now, my commute was an hour one way by this time because I used to commute an hour and a half one wow. way. When I tell you I got to work in 25 minutes, no traffic, and I'm sitting there in my, in my car, listening to my music, just praying and praising, girl, Sharon drove up, she looked over, and she hung her head. <laughs> she knew she it. Said, yeah, she, she still knew, knew immediately. She said, you're leaving, aren't you? As soon as she got out the car, I said, yeah. And so it was one of the most difficult yeah. decisions I had to make. Um, but I'm I'm grateful because honestly, I couldn't have seen. I, if you had told me I would be here 
I would have been here 11 years and mm -hmm. what, um, eight months ago, I would have <laughs> laughed in your yeah. face and been like, no, I'm not a business owner. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to be a speaker. I'm not going to do any yeah. of that. I will get a job. I will go work for someone. I yeah. will work in, you know, thought I was going to be a recruiter forever. So if you look back, do you know why she said law school? Like... Was there any meaning to you know employment, what? labor law? I, mean, I have no clue. I, it's still to this day, I kind of wonder sometimes. <laughs> um, but you know what? She's not the first person to have said that, though, because oh, okay. I had someone else that um, that asked me quite a bit mm -hmm. if I was going to law school. And I was like, law school? I don't know why everyone thinks I'm, I'm equipped for law. But um, yeah, and that was actually when I transitioned to PR as my major. Mm -hmm. One of the classes we had to take was communication mm -hmm. law. And I excelled in that class. I did really well, mm -hmm. but I never fees. really thought of it as a... Them fees. A yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I still... I'm still to this day, I, you know, I haven't had an opportunity yeah. to ask her because yeah. she ended up leaving the company and, um, within a year of my departure. And then I, I'm not even sure that the office is even yeah. there anymore. It usually works out that way. Unfortunately. So, <laughs> so once again, going back to that point, when you were sitting down uh, for the evaluation, mm -hmm. did you think at that time, or I guess just coming out of college, did you think the corporate ladder is real? Or, or even today, I mean, since you consult with so many people, do you mm -hmm. think the corporate ladder is real? I absolutely think it's real today. Mm -hmm. um, at that point, honestly, I had no clue. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know what was possible at that time. I thought that, um, I will tell you this. So part of the reason why I do what I do now mm -hmm. in terms of training and development is because far too often we get in our careers, we kind of fall into our careers, and then we allow things to happen to yeah. us. It's kind of yeah. like a boat in the sea. And when the waves come, it pushes you <laughs> over here and then it pushes you over there. It's then, you know, it yeah. doesn't really necessarily you're not tra charting the course. You're not steering that ship. You're kind of just going where it leads you. And so um I think that far too often, so many professionals, they're never trained on how to pursue opportunities. And when they finally do, it's 10, 15, 20 years down the road. And imagine how much more successful you could have been knowing what you know now, 10, 15 years ago. You know, and so when God let me out, um, I initially started recruiting. I came, I, when I moved to Houston, I started recruit. I, Wait, you started your business here? No, I started my business in, in oh, Northern okay. Virginia. Okay. And then I was writing resumes. I was doing consultations. I was work, trying to work with different organizations and, and churches and things yeah. like that. Um, but then God led me to Texas. Okay. And um, so I moved here and in the end of November, around in the end of November 06. And so I've pretty much been here for most of the life of my company, okay. most of the longevity. Yeah. But when I came, I initially thought, well, I don't know how I'll transition to the area. So maybe right. I'll find a contract recruiting right. position. And I was just looking for something really simple to kind of help me get my bearings and find right. out what is what, because it's huge in oil and gas here. And so when I came here, I ended up... Um, you know, a recruiter found my resume online and said, oh, we have a client that is interested in having a contract recruiter for a, a position that's about four to six weeks. Are you available? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, you know, I ended up falling into oil and gas and then, you know, very clients recruit, referred me to different organizations. At one point, I was recruiting for about three or four different um, or organizations in oil and gas. Um, and the company that I was brought in for the four to six week position, mm -hmm. I ended up recruiting for them for about 16 weeks oh, on wow. site. Yeah, I left. And within a week, they called me back and yeah. said, hey, can you continue recruiting for yeah. us? But you can do it from home. You don't yeah, even have to hey, come in anymore. And I was up. like, for the same thing? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So um, it wasn't until I, I thought I was forever going to be a recruiter. But then um, about six years in, I got the tug to, OK, now it's time for you to leave recruiting. I'm like, um, I don't know what you plan on, on having me do, Lord. So this is, this is definitely a journey. When you come across, we're not even going to, we're going to get to the resumes later. Okay, sure. Which technically should be first. <laughs> but, <laughs> but when you come across um, clients, whether it's over the phone or in person, mm -hmm. like, is there something that tells you, like, 
Yeah. Like, is there the gut feeling or like what goes into having a good candidate? Um, in terms of from the recruiting side or yeah, from my side with my clients? No, let's, let's stick with the recruiting, the recruiting side. side. Okay, yeah. absolutely. Um, I would say as a, as a recruiter, you want to, one, look at the character and integrity mm-hmm. of that person. Um, what type of things are they, are they saying they're interested in? Why have they left their jobs? What are they looking for? You know, making sure it's a good fit and making sure that they're not just there to just get a job, which a lot of people do. They, they, I don't know if you've heard, but Amazon was hiring 50,000 people right. yesterday, right. Um, which is great on one hand, but at the other on the other side, are you really going to take time to be able to invest in those employees and keep them long term? Or is that just your strategy to say, hey, Amazon's mm-hmm. hiring 50,000 people today? Headline. You know, because this is a headline. We're in the news. People are talking about us as positive. Yeah. But are you going to be laying yeah. 800 of those people off next week? Yeah. You know, um, and so it's really important to really invest in, in, in not just your employees but in your career so as a as a job seeker investing in yourself asking yourself where do i see myself going and how does this fit into the spectrum of where i'm trying to go because far too often people just kind of find any job because they get desperate and they start they wait until the last minute to even start looking for positions and then they start applying to everything and i'm gonna throw all these applications out there no something's gonna land at some point but um you know i i like to make sure that you know that you're looking for individuals that's going to have some continuity and stability um but that'll also be a good fit you know even in terms of dress attire or professionalism decorum um those type of things and and making sure that they've taken the time to research the company there's a lot of things that individuals can do to make sure that they're prepared for their interviews what do you think are do those same traits apply as a good candidate to a good employee, because some people get burned out. You know, we get excited. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like going on a first date, mm-hmm. right? You're yeah. going through the hiring yeah. pro- or the interview process. Exactly. You're excited. Got me a new job, yeah. y'all. Then you we get that new <laughs> boo, and it's like, wait a minute. Uh uh-uh, uh, no, we stopped going to dinner. Now we just meet in the. We meet at the house and then, you know, you get pork and beans instead of steak dinners. Like, what? I thought we were, you know, we were on a good line. Right. I know. On on day 91. Yeah. Day 91, (laughs) you get some pork and beans and some, you don't even get collard greens. Like, what? So how can we maintain, you know, these positive characteristics to say, hey, not only am I a good candidate, I'm a good employee. Absolutely. Throughout. So I would say, one, actively engaging in your career. Far too often, like I said, we fall into our careers and kind of allow things to happen to us as opposed to navigating it and mm-hmm. asking yourself, how is how does this fit into the long term of where I'm going and what can I do to be more effective? Where am I looking to go and working with your manager to create mm-hmm. a um, to create a, a path for you? Because. Most times what people do, the reason a lot of people get bored in their jobs is because they do the same thing day in and day out. They don't look for new challenges. They don't look for how can I be a better asset? What are the things that I can do to contribute to this company? And then they wonder why am I not getting promoted? And then someone else gets promoted. That's all that's been there for a shorter duration or they're hire someone from external, you know, and they're hire an external person. And then they wonder, well, why not me? Why am I not getting promoted? Why am I not? I've been there. Yeah. And so um, oftentimes we're not engaging within yeah. our career. So the important thing is really engaging within your career and not just kind of falling into it and allowing things to happen to you. What's the balance between networking within the company and networking outside of the company? Um, I think that, that that's a great question. Um, I think that there it's a, important to do both. Um Oftentimes when we go to company functions and company dinners, people have access to individuals that they would not traditionally have daily access to. What most people do, though, they go into a corner, mm-hmm. they take advantage of the open bar <laughs> because it's free drinks, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and they just they talk to the people that they already know. They talk to the people that they came with. They talk to the people that they work with every day, but they're not thinking about in terms of career mm-hmm. advancement. Mm-hmm. Where am I trying to go? How can I have a conversation with someone? And who is, do I know right. who the movers and shakers are in right. this organization? Because do I need to wait for an introduction or do I see someone sitting? Because most times people don't know how to network. And so when you go 
about a lot of people think networking is being a serial card pusher. Hey, here's my card. Here's my card. Oh, did you get one of my cards? No, right. you didn't. Okay. Mm, he doesn't have a card. Let me give him a card. Excuse me, sir. Do you need a card? Um, and then you leave home. Um, you leave the event and you have no value. Mm. And so when you are, whether you're doing internal or external networking, it's, port it's important to build relationships and to think about how it relationships should be mutually beneficial. And it's not just one-sided, like what can you do for me? I call it the with me effect. What's in it for me? And so if we can get past the with me effect and start thinking about, okay, how can I make you shine? What is there anything that I can do to help you in your endeavors? What can I do to be able to help enhance what you're doing right now? And so really um, building those relationships and going beyond just the superficial level um, and even conversing with those people that you don't have the opportunity yeah. to see on a day-to-day -day basis and building those relationships. Perhaps I can have lunch with you. Maybe I can, you know, sit down with you and, and talk about what it takes to be able to get to the point where you are. You're vice president. I would love right. to be a vice president right. one day. I'm not sure how to get there, but you've already done right. it. Perhaps I can glean some information from you because that's how you get seen. That's how you get noticed, not sitting over in the corner, you know, or being the person that's yeah. known for the turn up on, at the company function. <laughs> Like, oh, yeah, I saw his stomach. Well, oh, really? Are we doing that? Is that what we're doing? No, I hope not. <laughs> uh, that's one thing I did like because I was in banking for a few years. Mm -hmm. And one thing I liked about working with the larger companies versus the smaller companies was the affinity groups. Mm -hmm. Because whether we were playing kickball or we just had a women's luncheon, yes. it break down those barriers. So you can talk to, you know, a regional marketing manager or uh, maybe you had a VP that came in town because they're hosting this event and, you know, and it's just like, yes. whoa, you're just not in that directory, but I can, you know, touch you. Absolutely. And I, I definitely want to encourage anyone, if you are in corporate, if, you know, especially companies like Chevron, mm -hmm. uh, Chase, these larger companies, they have that or volunteer, they do. They you do. know. Um, and I like to tell people like Chevron, they have their race mm -hmm. like, or their walk, their marathon, like mm -hmm. participate. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to. Um, actively engage, not just in the conference room when you're having business meetings and throwing ideas, but also um, showing a little fun side personality on Absolutely. some of those corporate outside activities as well. Absolutely. And I, and I can't hone in enough on that. Actually, a lot of companies, when they bring me in, I'm working through their employee affinity mm. groups. So um, I've worked with like Volkswagen mm. um, and Audi's uh, Black Employee Resource mm. Group. They brought me in to do a presentation for Black MBA in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked with Constellation Energy here in Houston. Mm -hmm. um, so really what I'm trying to do is help to train people on how to be more effective in engaging gotcha. into their careers gotcha. and so not just allowing it to happen so it's a whole i have a whole session in terms yeah. of internal versus external networking how can you do it what are some of the what are some of the ideas that you can start to integrate now within your career that will get you where you're trying to go so absolutely employ it but you know what the crazy thing is most people don't take advantage of them. right they'll right. bring in these tremendous speakers they'll bring in resources and they're they're trying to equip individuals and then maybe 50 people will show up out of a company of 500, you know? Yeah, and I mean, somewhat, it takes a lot of work because yeah, I know absolutely. even for us, um, I remember we would go to Memorial Park and play volleyball mm -hmm. or whatever, and it's, it's after work. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, I don't spend the day with y'all. Mm -hmm. I still want to. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes lunch and learns. And those help, you yeah. know, it, it kind of breaks up the routine a little bit. Uh -huh. But I mean, it actually may, I've, I found out the more activities I was involved in work, mm -hmm. it was harder for me to leave my company. Yeah. And it, it gets you engaged. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's not, it's not just deployed. It's not a trick. And that's why companies, what I always tell organizations when they're looking at partnering with me, I help companies to train and retain talent so mm. they don't have to fire and rehire. Mm -hmm. Because when you engage your employees yeah. and when they're happy, wait, give me an employee that's happy to come to work. Yeah. Give me five employees that are happy to come to work over 15 that are disgruntled. It makes a lot. Because it, it was like, okay, you know, every Tuesday we play kickball mm -hmm. and very rarely do I have bad days, but yeah. you kind of take it out on the they field. know it's coming. I'm about, to, I'm about to kick a home run. Let me show you how. Who is sweet right here? <laughs> but, but no, it's um, Invesco was one of the best, one of my favorite companies. Yeah. So I, I enjoyed that. Yeah. Now, so we kind of talked about the fun, right? Mm -hmm. The networking, the mm -hmm. affinity groups. 
Uh, what about the professional development? You mm -hmm. know, taking time to do that, whether it is a lunch and learn, or maybe the company has some online trainings mm -hmm. you can jump in and access to, continuing education credits. Yeah. I think some people just, once again, look, they pay me to be here. <laughs> and they fall out. They fall out like, I'm here. I, I'm don't checking that me. box. Don't ask me for nothing that, more. That's it. That's the mentality. And But you know what? We never know because mm -hmm. no one's really come up to us and mm -hmm. said, hey, it's important mm -hmm. for you to engage. Yeah. You know, there may be a person, people here and there yeah. on the smaller scale who do. But it's so true. Yeah. We don't realize. It's like, oh, wait, a company. A picnic? Nah, I'm good. I already have plans. I'm I'm not trying to. And I have my own friends. My yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they're cooler than you, <laughs> you know. But it's important to really engage within that because that level of engagement, and then that's how people also know you. Mm -hmm. So they become to build a rapport yeah. with you. They become to trust you, and then you also it, you build and establish more fundamental relationships. And in those relationships, you know, it can help you to get where you're trying to go. So. So oh, absolutely, I, I can't state enough, you know. So I want to flip it on the small business side. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we talked, you know, we, you specialize in recruiting, retaining mm -hmm. um, professionals. Now, I'm sure you've heard of this saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. for a small business owner, uh, slow to hire, quick to fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> I am not a firm believer in that. Okay. Um, I'm I am a I am a firm believer in diligent to hire. Mm -hmm. So I would say okay. diligent to hire and invest before you fire. Hold on now. <laughs> Wait a minute. I need to write that down. <laughs> I got you. Be diligent when you hire, but invest before you fire. Okay. Because most times what we expect is for people to come in already prepared. Mm -hmm. Most times organizations don't train you. Yeah. And, and I'll be honest, most times when you go into companies and they expect you to hit the ground running and be able to do the same thing you did for this organization, for my organization. But one of the things that I tell people, just like when you're writing resumes, it's not a one size fit all solution. Mm -hmm. Jobs are not one size fits all. Michelle, quick question for you. And it's actually a question that I ask in the book. Do you eat meat? I do. Have you ever had a chicken sandwich from McDonald's? No. You haven't? No. Uh, sorry, McDonald's. No. Have you had one from Chick-fil-A? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> have you had one from Burger King? No. Okay. Well, why have you not had one from McDonald's or Burger King? No. No. It's I, um, I guess growing up, I would, not now, but I would either eat Big Mac or chicken nuggets. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But they didn't. The they chicken never sang to you, though. Yeah, okay. like, I guess, I want to say that's not what they advertise. Gotcha. That's not what I was introduced to. Gotcha. So, let me ask you this. If I had two chicken sandwiches, one from McDonald's and one from Chick-fil-A, do you oh. think you could tell the difference? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> what if I blindfolded you and let you taste them? Do you think you could tell the oh, difference? Oh, absolutely. How? I know what a Chick-fil-A is. <laughs> Yeah, the Chick Fil A, the Chick Fil A sandwich yeah. seems like it came from parents. Like it had yeah. a good lineage, uh, right? Yeah, it had a good yeah. lineage. It has that quality meat, yeah. right? The bread is good. You can taste yeah. it in their in their products. The McDonald's is in its own category, right? So what I like to tell people is so many people are content on being able to say, well, it's a chicken sandwich. It's the same thing, mm. but it's not. Mm -hmm. What you do for one organization mm -hmm. is not the way things need to always be done for another yeah. organization. It's not one size fits all. Yeah. It's not just a chicken sandwich. It's a Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. And so when you start looking at your career as what you want it to be, as opposed to the one size fits all solution, that's when you become more strategic. That's mm -hmm. when you start navigating navigating through that space. And that's when you will start being able to go to work happy, being able mm -hmm. to actually realize the value that you bring to the company. Because the most essential thing that any company, if, if you're looking for a job or if you're not getting raises, if you're not getting promotions, I would, I would beg you to look at your career and ask yourself, what value am I bringing to this organization? Mm -hmm. Because that's what it boils down to. Organizations, want value. They want people that are going to contribute to the value of the organization. It's not just, okay, well, if, if I bring in 5,000, if I hire 5,000 people, but 4,500 of them leave, yeah. is that, yeah. is that a value for the organization? Mm -hmm. No, because now they have to pay unemployment for all those people. 
right? And so if I'm looking at quality versus quantity, that's the most important thing. And small businesses, you can't afford to hire, to fire quickly. You can't afford that because half the time you can't even afford the unemployment insurance that you're going to have to pay. One. And then two, if you invest in your employees, sometimes they may not quite be working out how you want them to be, but you saw qualities in them first when you hired them. You had your accountability board that helped you to make those decisions. And now that you have them on board, it's not just, okay, you're here, get a paycheck. You need to invest any, those things that you invest in are the things that grow. If you feed, if you get a plant and you decide not to water it, yeah. It's going to be just like all the plants that I have. I, I do not have a green thumb. <laughs> I do not have a green thumb. My thumb is brown just like it sits, right? <laughs> but the thing is, the reason my thumb is green is because I'm nurturing other yeah, things. I'm yeah, pouring yeah, it yeah. into other things. It. And so by the time I get back to my house, it's yeah. like, wait, plants? Yeah. What are we doing? Yeah. You know? And so if you decide to pour into that plant, but the more nutrients, the more love, even talking to it. My dad has a very green thumb and he talks to his plants. I'm like, really? He will talk to his plants. All in. I'm like, man, this that's commitment right there. That is a commitment. Because I would sit there like, hey, how you doing? How was your day? <laughs> you know, it's dusty around here, oh, huh? Man. All right. There's there's so much. I have so many questions. Um, okay. How important is a small business to have systems and processes in place? Mm. And then who should be the first person they hire based off a title? Ooh. This girl right. <laughs> I need y'all to give it up for Michelle and go away with these questions. Wow. So how important is it for processes and mm-hmm. procedures to be in place? Mm-hmm. They need to be the fundamental establishment mm-hmm. of your company before you even hire people. You need to know how you need to know what's going to happen, what you need, what what can you afford to hire? You know, because that would be the mm. first question that you do. Sometimes you might need to just outsource and get contractors to help you or hire people that can help you in different capacities as opposed to hiring for a full time position that, you know, you're going to have to lay off three months, three yeah. and a half months down the road because you don't know if this client's going to sign a contract, you know. And so it's important to know what resources you have access to. And if you don't have access to those resources, build a network of yeah. professionals that can help you to do that. Um And also, who should be the first one Mm -hmm. that you hire? I would actually say that um, um, either HR, someone in human resources, Mm. um, and it it needs to be someone who has a fundamental understanding of building an HR team, not just someone that can just bring a whole bunch of people in, because anybody can recruit a lot of people. But you're looking at making sure that recruiting is cost effective um, and not just throwing money. I can't tell you how many times I've gone into organizations, corporations Mm -hmm. um, that are just throwing money at recruiting and hoping that it lands. And I would come in like, wait, what in the world? You have this $25,000 subscription and you've hired how many people from it? Oh, none. Oh, okay. So throwing money at problems doesn't work. Like just throwing it and hoping that it lands. So investing in someone who can re- who has the ability and even if you don't hire that HR person, being able to have someone that you trust, yeah. a consultant that can come in and, and, and be honest with you, because it's important. And, and one of the most essential qualities for a business owner is the need to be able to accept criticism and critique. Because it, if you can't accept that, uh, I have seen so many times where small business owners fail. Because they can't accept criticism or critique. And they want to hear everything is perfect and everything is, you know, it's hunky-dory when it's not. You mentioned um, Mm cost-effective. How much should we have? Like, you know how they say, I guess on the personal side, we should have three to six months Mm -hmm. of personal or business savings Mm -hmm. in our account. Mm -hmm. Should we have X amount of dollars or a portion of that dedicated to... Um, employees, um, employee salaries. So here's the thing. Each company is different. Okay. Each organization, each industry is different. Sometimes there are are companies that may be very heavy in consultants, Mm -hmm. or you may have an organization that may Mm -hmm. be, that may need internal people to work in your warehouse, or you may need, um, people that are technical, technical in nature. So it really, you know, I would say it, it varies for each organization, but my, my thing is make sure that you can afford to hire them long-term start thinking long-term don't just think okay i have 
$35,000 in the bank. Okay, that might be a half a person's salary or right. one person's salary. Right. If you can't afford that long term and you don't know where the money is coming from beyond six months to a year, then you may want to hold off on yeah. hiring that full time person and just hire a contractor. And then even with contractors, it's not just, okay, now you're in the door, you do you, and I don't watch what you're doing, and I turn my, I, I leave everything to yeah. you. No, it's important for business owners to still be engaged in what they're doing as well. And even if you hire consultants to be hands-on and to understand, to have an understanding of why they're doing what they're doing and not questioning them but as if they don't understand what they're doing, but making sure that it makes sense for your organization. Right. Um, so much work I can say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I talk about cash flow all the time because uh -huh. cash flow is so important yeah. in so many aspects. And um, I, it's a great responsibility. If you are going to hire someone, you definitely mm -hmm. want to make sure your cash flow is on point to sustain your business yeah. as well as this person's livelihood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I, w I was, you know what, and I'll tell you this, when I was in college, I had a restaurant, it was my junior year of college, and I worked for a family owned uh, pizza restaurant. And I love the job. I've loved every job I've had. So I, I really shouldn't even say that because it's like, oh, I love that job. Oh, no, I love this job, too. Love the job. People were great. But towards the end, they literally had checks bouncing mm. to employees. So you work your entire week as as a college student now. Come on now. A college <laughs> student is already broke and we trying yeah, to get the money yeah, for our tuition, yeah. our, 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 our rent. I had an apartment. I went to the check and they said, I went to the bank and they said insufficient funds. I was like, wait a minute. I deposited my check. They said, mm, about that check. It I'm did not lawyer. clear. Not even a person. I was like, oh. what? Man, I went up in that job. He said, oh, you know, well, let me, let me see if I can find some cash to give you. Cause he was like, well, maybe I'll write you another check. Nah, mm, I don't want no more checks from y'all. Let me, let me just get, you know, <laughs> we can go ahead and get this cash. cash the way my bank account already works, it, it doesn't, it doesn't deal well with back about checks you know oh, I, man. I have I might have had $51.86 you yeah. know but then once they take those fees out woo, that, it hits the fan so um, you know and that's one of the things that I always think mm -hmm. about especially when you're hiring employees um, how would you know people don't necessarily think about how those things affect their brand mm -hmm. but it does that's your integrity it. yeah yeah and if you can't afford to do what you say you're going to do, then don't do it in the first place yeah. or don't promise that you're going to do it. Yeah. So it's best to be able to assess what to assess your resources that you have access to and then allocate those things that, you know, OK, day one, I can hire this person and I can keep them at least a year. And I know that this is a con this is business that's con continuous and I'm not going to have to worry. Now, not to say that things don't happen because things happen. Right. But it's also important to communicate. So if you see that things aren't going well, don't wait until that last paycheck that's going to bounce. Don't tell. Look, don't don't have somebody work for you a whole week and then think that they're, they're going to get a check. Yeah. Now, you know what, Michelle, I'm, I'm going to let you know we're a little tight on funds yeah. right now because I would rather you tell me and mm. give me the option to say, you know what, you've been such a great employer. I'm willing to forego being able to get my check. Now, granted, it may not be college students that can do right, that, right. but I'm willing to forego getting my check this week to be able to help you if it can help us to be able to sustain and grow mm -hmm. back to where we're, we're getting. Is there a means to an end? Or are you just trying to help me work for free? Mm. Because if you're not communicating with people, because oftentimes what happens is when we have to have those difficult conversations, people don't want to have them. They just want to act like, oh, you know what? Can somebody call Michelle and let her know? I, no, no. Can you like real quick, maybe give us like two to three points when it comes to interns? Because every, especially small business mm -hmm. owners, you know, they just think free help. And mm -hmm. I know state laws are different. Obviously, we're in Houston, Texas. Yeah. But just some tips on when it comes to managing, gaining or managing interns. Yeah. So from the intern perspective, and I'll give it from both sides. Okay. So from an intern perspective, you are there to gain invaluable experience. Mm -hmm. So it's important for you to not go in with preconceived notions like, oh, psh, I bet I'm not getting no coffee. I know that much. I'm a technical <laughs> intern. That's what I am. Yeah. You know, you need to be willing to do 
the grunt work and do mm -hmm. those things that it takes to be successful in that role. Because sometimes doing the, being, having the willingness to do those ground level things will help you to be able to gain long-term employment yeah. or long-term opportunities. And so looking at it as an opportunity as well, not just thinking, well, I'm just an intern. Mm -mm, don't ask me nothing. I don't know anything. It's just like when you go into a store, I've had instances where I've gone into a store and I've asked an associate, can you tell me where this is? That's not my department. I don't know. Yeah. Versus someone that says, you know what, actually, that's not my department. I'm not sure what it is, but let me find out for you really quickly. You know, not always being fast to say, that's not me. Yeah. That's not on me. You need to find that out on your own. And then the third thing I would say is, um, is bringing value, you know, bring value to what you do, to, to, to everything that you do. Don't just do the bare minimum. Always ask for ask for feedback, ask for advice. Is there anything that I can, how can I do this more effectively? Okay, you mentioned that you would like it a little faster. Okay, is there anything else that I can do to be more prepared or better prepared for this opportunity? Um, and so from an employer perspective, yeah, free help doesn't mean slave labor. Mm. So it's important to have the have a clear job description in terms of what your expectations are for that person to do, but realize they're not your employee. So you're not you're you may not get the you're not gonna get the the A level support that a marketing executive that you're gonna yeah. pay fifty thousand uh, dollars a contract to do they're they're not they're just not gonna have that knowledge so uh, have proper expectations mm -hmm. and know what your expectations should be and that it's not just free labor just to say okay well you need to be able to do everything pristine and then you need to bring me all this business in so your business should already be established there should be complementary things that they yeah. can do or things that that are advisable for them to do because you you also don't want to tie your brand into an intern as well. Have you heard about interns leaving their jobs and then they're taking those clients with them? Have you heard about that? Like on social media, yeah. they'll build their social media profiles yeah. and people are so engaged with them that they leave the company to be able to get with them or the company's like, give us our page back. No, oh, oh you're not? Okay. Not bad. <laughs> Okay, well, go and keep our Twitter followers. Yeah, so you know, so it's important that you kind of keep an a, keep an eye on every different aspect, even those aspects that you're not even as well versed in, and learn those things. Ask the intern, "Why did you do this?" Oh, okay, that's a great idea, and be able to be able to accept and to give feedback as well. That would be the other thing that I would give for both sides: be able to receive and to give and receive constructive criticism, because it's not always how you say things, but it's what you say, but it's not always just what you say. It's yeah. also how you say things. Should there be a deciding factor if I'm going to pay an intern or it's just... So um, looking at paid interns, I'll... okay, let me just go here. As a college student or as someone that's doing an intern, you just think back when you were in mm -hmm. that time, you know, in that time frame. And you may not have done internships, but you know what it is to be a starving college student. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you yeah. can afford to pay an intern, yeah. it's optimal. Even if it's a minimal amount of money, yeah. it, it's you better than, it, yeah, it, it really does. And so... Sometimes people just think free labor, free everything, and then you give me all of you to give for me to give you none of me. So um, I know they're gaining invaluable experience, but you're also gaining additional labor. And yeah. so I, I'm always cognizant of that. And I, and I try to, and get it, to tell people to, to be that way as well, because your brand is all you have. Mm. And if people are talking about you like she cheap, she don't have no money, she's not going to pay yeah. you, it's you know, good. who's going to want to come back yeah. to work for you versus you paying someone, even if you don't have very much to pay them saying, OK, I'm trying to get this off the ground. I'm trying to get this. The, this is my goal. I would love to work with you to achieve this. Is this something that you can help me to do? And I can't pay you right now, but maybe I can pay you in two months or three months, whatever the time frame is, just being open from the yeah. start and having those difficult conversations up front. Uh, but you, you, I mean, you bring up a good point um, because they're probably spending, they're taking their time, mm -hmm. yeah. they're spending their gas money at yeah. the least yeah. to get to your office or to the event, um, keeping the phone on, keeping the internet on. Like mm -hmm. you don't know what's going on yeah. and it's not just 
them living tuition free. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> doesn't have scholarships like Eating that. Eating Cheetos at the dorm. Yeah. And I've talked to plenty of students that are in difficult situations and they're, 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 um, financial, their financial aid doesn't always cut it. Yeah. So that's why they're looking for internships. That's why they're looking for opportunities and jobs. And, you know, um, yeah, they're getting valuable experience, but at the same time, give them something that they can, that they will be able to help them get to the work. <laughs> you know, sometimes they can't afford the yeah. gas that it takes yeah. or the bus to have to get yeah. there. You that's know, because not everyone even drives. You know, I hear that. <laughs> All right. So I have this book. Mm-hmm. It's called Master Your Career Playbook. Hey. You put my favorite Bible verse in there. Did I? Yeah, so thank you. Oh, which one? Jeremiah 29. Oh, um, verse 11. come on now. That's my favorite. That's, <laughs> hey, mine too. For mine I know too. the plans I have for you. Thoughts of good yeah. and not of evil. So to give you. you a future and a hope. Yeah. Okay. Come on now. So, um... I thought I had a bunch of resume questions, Mm -hmm. but I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to follow your lead. Okay. Um, Why should we buy your book? (sighs) Why should you buy (laughs) Master Your Career Playbook resumes (laughs) available on Amazon? Yes. Um, (laughs) So, one, the book is technically about writing resumes, Mm -hmm. but it's more so about helping people to identify and articulate their value. Mm. Far too often we're consumed with, okay, let me write this resume to get a job. Mm -hmm. And people have a misconception Mm -hmm. of what resumes are. Okay. Um, I literally spell it out for you in the book, what a resume is, what the purpose of a resume is from a recruiting perspective. Because, you know, you you can't, uh, most of, most individuals are not trained on how to write a resume. Yeah. And I will say, even when I was in college, I did not even realize that we had a career development department that helps you to write resumes until my senior year, second semester senior yeah. year, might I add. And then it wasn't until March. Okay. <laughs> By this time, I, when I found out, and, I, and let me tell you how I found out. So I was walking to my home. I lived off campus about three minutes from campus. And I was walking and I saw a friend and she was to the nines, girl. I said, wait a minute, where are you going? Looking all nice. She said, oh, I just had my um, my final interview. I yeah. said, interview with who? And she, I want to say it was like Coca-Cola or someone like, like someone like that. You know, it was a big name company. And I was like, wait a minute, they're not located here mm-hmm. in Boone, North Carolina. Nobody's in Boone. She said, well, no, but they've been coming since last semester interviewing. Wow. And I said, wait, why didn't anybody tell me? I would have loved to be able to interview for them. I said, they had PR jobs? And she said, yeah, there's all kinds of companies that come up here. Well, wait a minute. How did I know about this? So when I went to career services, which she she was like, it's in that building right there. I was like, oh, walk by it every day. Never paid attention, right? So I go in and I talk to um, someone in career services. And I was like, well, I want a job. I want to interview um, for PR positions. And they were like, okay, well, you know, it is late in the semester and a lot of companies have already done hiring. Um, Perhaps we can get you an interview. I don't know. We'll see. So I did get one interview. (laughs) And I went to my interview. I was I was dressed. I was professional. And they said they said, well, the interview went really well. But unfortunately, we've already pretty much made our decision. Mm. Like this is the third, this is the third or fourth round of of interviews we've had. So if we had been able to meet you earlier, perhaps we would have been able to consider you. But at this time, you know, we're going to go with the candidates that we, you know, with one of the candidates that we've already identified. And I'm like, (laughs) you know, I'm thinking with my ugly face, my ugly cry, right? Um, As I'm walking back home. And I was like, man, why ain't nobody tell me? (laughs) Well, so when I graduated, I took the resume that the career counselor helped me to write, but she didn't teach me how to write a resume. She Mm -hmm. just kind of doctored it up and was Mm -hmm. like, okay, we're going to make it pretty. So as I was applying for positions, I used the same resume she gave me. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm applying, I'm applying, I'm applying. And also I'm not getting interest. I'm not getting hits. I'm not getting people to call me about their, about jobs. And when they do call, they're like, okay, well, tell me about your experience. I say, well, I, I, well, I haven't had any internships. I didn't have any jobs. I haven't had a career in PR, but I'm a great person. I really think you should give me a chance. They're like, "Eh, no, uh -uh. that's not what we're going to do. So we're going to hire someone that has more experience. (sighs) Really? 
So I ended up, um, and, and I told you the story about falling into HR. And so um, this book will help you. It helps not only professionals, but mm -hmm. also students to articulate their value and identify the value that they can bring and to, to communicate that transferable experience to employers, um, not just uh, uh, give you a regurgitation of your experience like most people do. Yeah, and well, I just, you know, used this book recently, you know, a few weeks, maybe a month ago, okay. we were talking about. Um, I applied for this position, and unfortunately, that didn't happen. Okay. But yeah, I definitely had to pull this book out uh, from the bookshelf and like look at Did they at call you? No. So what happened was um, I applied for an executive director of college relations at Lone Star. Okay. So I redid my resume it's probably one of the best resumes i've ever done mm -hmm. i actually took time and wrote a cover letter i typed a cover come letter come on now cover letter yeah and um because i was following the instructions at mm -hmm. this point right? good and um so i applied it was refer the job was referred to me from a friend that mm -hmm. works at lone star okay. okay so you know talk to her put up her information um week later i followed up not even a full week i followed up I got to laugh. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I don't start crying. Oh, no. <laughs> Y'all about to make Michelle. She emotional. Come on now. Long star. No, but you wonder, like, how often does this happen? Yeah. So I called a follow up and um, gave the lady the job number. And she was like, Oh, it's already filled. No, no. She was like, Oh, yeah, it's still available. But we're updating our systems tomorrow. So you probably have to reapply. Oh, okay. <laughs> so they updated their whole HR, back end HR, whatever systems, um, which was true because I don't think I did it the next day, mm -hmm. but two days later, mm -hmm. I went back to the website. Everything, the layout, website, uh, yeah, just different, and the job wasn't there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so here's the thing. <laughs> I know. Like, oh, oh. uh, okay. So here's the thing. Sometimes employers know that they're going to have an opportunity mm -hmm. coming up and they may actively post for a job that they're going to have coming up, but it may not necessarily be available as of yet. Mm -hmm. And so they're trying to get resumes on mm -hmm. hand for when that opportunity does arise. Other times they're just kind of testing the water like job yeah, seekers yeah, do, yeah. testing the water to see what's out there. Um, and it really, you know, it's, it, that's discouraging because, you know, it can be <laughs> like, man, you know, I put all that work in. Literally, and, I, I spent a whole Saturday, yeah. like just sitting down because yeah. that's when I have my most time. Uh -huh. And I don't know. It was just like, it was just weird. Like the whole system's updating. Yeah. So I don't understand from my perspective, I don't understand why you can't just transfer my information over to your new system. So, so that was the thing. And, you know, but I mean, I was very grateful because I was like, mm -hmm. she didn't have yeah, to she tell didn't. me that, uh -huh. you know, and it's like, I don't yeah. know what that was about. So I was very grateful, but I kind of felt like, you know, am I in limbo and mm -hmm. I was going to just resubmit the same resume because mm -hmm. I'm like, the hard part is over. Yeah. But needless to say, and I'm not in the thing is, I'm not looking for a job, yeah. but every now and then if something get, falls into your it's life. like whoa yeah. and my friend was like michelle like that has your name i was like okay mm -hmm. but yeah so um but what i like about this book though you kind of said all of this um it's like we do the resume because we know we have to do it mm -hmm. right and it's just like let me put this down bullets education boom mm -hmm. boom boom um but you really go into talking about creating a strategy mm -hmm. and i know in my book i talk about a networking plan and i kind of feel like you're talking about the very um, beginning steps of creating your career plan, starting with your resume. Mm -hmm. So I got to ask, mm -hmm. what's next? <laughs> <laughs> she would ask that, you know, <laughs> she would ask me that question. So I'm trying to, I'm in the process and it's been a, it's been a more arduous process just because I've had a number of different um, consultations and clients that I've been working at working with. Um, and I've had a lot of interview consultations for job seekers who have been, who have been um, applying for positions and maybe haven't heard back or that have been interviewing and haven't been hired. So um, <clears throat> it's, I've, I've, 
try to sit down and get that time, but it's been the hardest. It's been, I'm not going to lie, it's been one you of the most You're a demand, difficult. girl. You know, and it's, it's a blessing. <laughs> it's a blessing to be in demand. I, I will say that. Um, but I actually um, am writing the follow-up to this, which will be um, Master Your Career Playbook Interviews. So interviewing will be the next book, um, which is, you know, a it's foreseeable transition, yeah, yeah. you know, um, because a lot of people have been asking, OK, when's the interviewing book yeah. coming out? Um, but interviewing, it is so intricate. And I've done a lot of um, consultations and have had a lot of different clients from different capacities in, in that I've been able to work with. Um, and I wanted to actually share this testimonial. Uh, and this is part of why I haven't been able to get the book written yet, because I've had so many of these consultations and um, I, I, I focus on training and development now, but have been really trying to find the time to sit down and actually get my thoughts on paper, which is the most difficult part. So I had a gentleman who was referred to me um, a couple of months ago. He uh, was looking for opportunities. He was a senior HR professional. He had been in HR, had, you know, years and years of experience. And he was applying for positions. And a friend sent me his resume and said, hey, if you see any opportunities, uh, feel free to let me know. So when she sent me the resume, I was like, Ooh, OK, do you think he would be open to talking to me? And she said, oh, I'm sure. Uh, let me touch bases with him. I hope so. So I ended up um, talking to him and I was I let him know. I said, so have you been getting hits with this resume? He was like, well, I get hits now and again. Well, his resume really did not sell him as mm -hmm. a candidate. I'll be honest. And it really did not articulate the value that he had to, to add to any organization. And so I gave him some feedback. I, I, I coached him on how to interview and gave him some strategies that he could utilize from a recruiting perspective. And he, you know, although he was in HR, you you assume that it's it's fundamental, but it's not always, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And so when I followed up with him, I said, you know, I actually want to task you because he was like, well, I read your book. I said, did you read the whole thing or did you apply bits and pieces? He was mm -hmm. like, well, I more so apply bits and pieces. I said, no, I want you to go back and read the whole book and apply what it says. So he went back and I, I hadn't heard from him in about two weeks, in about a week and a half, almost two weeks. And so I sent him an email. I was like, hey, just following up, trying to see how things are going. Have you been able to finish the book? And so he emails me back and he says, um, I, and I'm actually reading this because it was a post that I posted on LinkedIn as well. And I share it with my network. He said, um, I um I yes, I finished the book weeks ago and it was very helpful. I uncovered so much. I revamped my resume completely and it looks a thousand times better than my previous ones. My previous resume was pitiful based on my experience. I have great news as well. I received an offer yesterday for a Ooh. senior HR role thanks to you. I applied for the position with my revamped resume as well. I interviewed this past Tuesday and received the offer yesterday. I shared your, your book earlier this week to a large number of people in my job networking group. Many plan on buying your book and I will continue to spread the word. I really appreciate all of your help. And so for me, it's not just about writing a book to be able to say I wrote a book and it's on paper. Yeah, it's yeah. out. It's about being able to yeah. receive responses like yeah. this that says not only have you helped me to be able to gain a more effective view on where I'm going, but you've helped me to be able to solidify that yeah, position as well. Yeah. So it's about helping people to identify and to walk in their purpose. And when you think, when I think about what it takes to be able to help equip people with the information to walk in their purpose, it's more than just kind of, cause I can write some words and put them down yeah. on paper, but I really want to go through that process where I'm, I'm sitting down in your shoes and I'm thinking, yeah. well, why, what do I, what am I doing wrong? Because I've had so many people coming to me saying I can't get an interview or I've gotten interviews, but now I can't get hired. You know, I've gone on countless mm -hmm. interviews. I'm getting, I'm, my resume is getting me in the door now, but what now? Yeah. What's next? So it's really about making sure that it's not just a, you know, cause there's so many books on interviewing out there. I mean, there's a lot of books on resume writing yeah. out there, but I want mine to be the one that speaks to that situation that you're in. 
And that literally helps to equip you with the information that you need to set yourself up for success. I love it. If someone is not willing to do their own resume, how much, what's a good price range to hire someone? Mm. (laughs) Because a lot of times, oh, it's so expensive. So here's the thing. Um, I usually encourage people to write their own resumes. I used to actually write resumes Mm -hmm. for individuals and I've had clients that have been able to succeed. And I had, I had one client, I had to tell him to stop sending me referrals at one (laughs) point because this, this guy was sending me referrals left and right. But I I thank you so much though, Mr. Peoples. I appreciate that. Um, But, you know, and he was actually more of the catalyst for me writing the book Mm -hmm. because so many times we expect other people to kind of know where we're going and they just want you to make it pretty. Yeah. Resumes are not about being pretty one. Um, It's about the content. And just like that chicken sandwich we talked about Mm -hmm. earlier, the resume that you write for one company is not going to be the resume Mm -hmm. or should not be the same resume that you write for another company. So if you don't know how to adjust your resume on your own, you're going to be paying people every single time you write your resume. And it may sound like it's okay. Well, what if I only pay, if I only pay three or $400 for this resume? Well, okay. How many positions do you plan on applying for? (laughs) Yeah. Because go ahead and multiply that times all the positions you plan on applying Mortgage. Yeah, exactly. And so that's why I would rather equip you. There's, there's an old proverb that says, if you, if you, um, if you feed a man, you can feed him for a day, Mm -hmm. but if you teach him to fish, you can feed him for a lifetime. I would rather feed you for a lifetime and have you buy this one book that will help you to walk through the entire process. So when you start applying for other jobs, you're not going to take that same resume and keep applying, 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 because just like those chicken sandwiches, it looks like a chicken sandwich into a vegetarian. They're like, they're both chicken sandwiches. They're the same thing, but it's not. It's not until you delve deeper and find out the qualities, the mission, the vision. What is this organization looking for? What are the key qualities that they're looking for in this person? Because just because a a, a receptionist that this company is a receptionist doesn't mean it's the same qualities over here. I've seen receptionists at companies where all they do is answer the phone. Right. That's all they do. But other companies yeah. where receptionists mm-hmm. take messages, they plan the conference room, they um, they manage the calendars mm-hmm. for the executives, they greet visitors as they walk in, they answer phones, and they have a, a, a plethora of responsibilities. So you can't just automatically assume that an, that an engineer over here is the same as an engineer over here, yeah. you know, and the responsibilities that it entails. Ah, so much, so much. <laughs> I'm like, I can either hold you hostage or I can bring you back. <laughs> yes, well, I'm, I'm so grateful to have had the opportunity. I love, uh, I'm, I'm so proud of you as well. Well, Michelle, uh, I'm proud of you doing your thing and um, and helping to and helping to equip people with with information that will help them to succeed because this is pivotal. Yeah, like if you're able to listen to a podcast and get information yeah. from people that you would technically have to pay thousands of dollars to yeah. receive, you know, because having consultations with individuals is well, not a cheap process. That's Come, why on I started this. Come on now. Come on now. No, thank you. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I started it. You know, there was definitely some selfish reasons mm-hmm. behind it. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, eventually it's like, man, I'm getting like free coaching. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm getting free, yeah. you know, people can promote their books before or after it comes out. Yeah. Um, but then part of me is like, man, where was this, you know, four or five years it. ago? Yeah. yeah. You know. When well, you needed it. <laughs> I'm saying, because I'm working on my second book right now. Mm-hmm. And um, last night, I was started on the section where it's called, This Is Not What They Told Me in High School mm. and Career Stagnation. Mm. <laughs> Come on. Now. So what we need to do, I'm a firm believer in accountability. Mm. I'm a firm believer mm. in that. And actually, you know, you were instrumental in helping me to get my first book written. Um, and I believe maybe we should sit down and have some writing days. You and I, where okay, we can bounce okay. each other ideas off of each okay. other and, you know, kind of have some thought processes and stuff because I think accountability is essential in everything that we oh, do. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I, I tell business owners, where you, whether you're a small business owner, whether you're in corporate America, it's important to have an accountability partner that can help you to yeah. assess where you are and where you're trying to go yeah. and make sure that, that you have the tools to get there. I, honestly, I felt, I kind of feel like, Everything I've learned 
through this journey of entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. if I could just take that chunk and rewind it, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the mentorship, the accountability, mm -hmm. um, networking, mastermind. I just That's started nice. networking around that time, okay. mastermind groups, mm -hmm. podcasts, professional, like if I could just take this bulk yeah. <laughs> of information and be like, oh, let's go back five to seven years. Yeah. It's like, who knows where I would have been? Like, I think Absolutely. I could have definitely seen that path would have been more visible mm -hmm. instead of me imagining. Mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah. yeah. Same here. But Same um, here. I've known you. We've known each other for what, four, four, five, four no, years? No, it's been longer than that. <laughs> 2013, I'll say that. Was it? Because I know I was Urban League since. 2012. Yeah, probably about 2012. Well, I've always admired you. When I was, when we were both engaged with different organizations. Yes. So it's important. <laughs> when I talk engaged. about being actively engaged, engaged, it's not just an act. It's something that oh, you yeah. do when you build your oh, business, yeah. you build your relationships, you build all of that. All of it is predicated on your level of engagement and yeah. your success will either be dictated because mm -hmm. of or despite mm -hmm. of your level of engagement. Absolutely. Um, I've always admired you, but it just, it feels good to like actually like hear your story mm -hmm. and then... I guess all of the knowledge, all of the wisdom. She poured, <laughs> y'all. She poured. Trust me, I've heard her speak before. Oh, but um, just very grateful and appreciative. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me on the show. Absolutely. Hey, everyone. Remember, I believe in you. Personal connection leads to an influential network. Thanks for networking with Michelle. All right. So before we wrap up, how can everyone... So you can find me... Uh, via email at jhines at regionalconsult.com. And that's R-E-G-I-O-N-A-L consult, C-O-N-S-U-L-T dot com. Or you can find me on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Regional Consult or LinkedIn at Juanita Hines, um, my first and last name. You can also find the book, Master Your Career Playbook Resumes on Amazon. You can put in the title, Master Your Career Playbook Resumes, or my name, Juanita Hines. And I look forward to talking to you yeah. soon. Yeah. All right, everyone. I'm going to have all of those links in the show notes. Uh, make sure you reach out to her. Make sure you get the book. I don't care what level, entry level, um, obviously senior positions. If you need to update your resume, this is the book you want to have. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. All right, everyone. Remember, I believe in you. Personal connection leads to an influential network. Thanks for networking with Michelle.